Hey there, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about something a little bit different than the location and communities and how Cochrane's real estate market is going. We're gonna to touch on the federal announcement on September 16th about the changes to the mortgage rules. Now I'm gonna preface this by saying that I am not a licensed mortgage broker. I'm looking at these rule changes in the lens of a real estate agent, how that's gonna potentially affect you as a buyer, how it may affect you as a seller, and how it's gonna affect the market itself. So in terms of the actual nitty gritty and diving into the specifics of the mortgages, that is where I encourage you to speak with your mortgage broker. If you are needing a good mortgage broker, I'd love to help you out. You can reach out to me and I can pass on a few of my trusted contacts in that industry as well. But first things first, let's jump into that press release. Now, the big thing is that we had already seen some changes starting in August of this year with the new federal budget. And the biggest one there was that first time home buyers were eligible to purchase new construction homes only, and that's important, new construction homes only using a 30 year um, amortization in a mortgage. Traditionally, that amortization period is 25 years, be the time it takes to pay off your mortgage. Now, the first of these two changes in this latest release is that any first time home buyer whether it's new construction or buying a prior lived in home is now eligible for that 30 year amortization period on any purchase. Now, as I mentioned here, that is only applicable to first time home buyers. So for those renters that are looking to buy their first home, or you've just graduated college, you had a job, you've been saving up to buy your first home, making use of that first time home buyer savings account or using that RRSP home buyer program, the affordability of that initial purchase may actually be slightly less because your monthly payment is going to be slightly lower because your mortgage is broken up over 30 years. Now, with that lowered monthly payment, it will come with a slightly lowered required income in order to qualify for that mortgage. Now, again, this is where a mortgage broker comes in to go through the exact specifics of how much. The big takeaway that I want to talk about with first rule is that for those first time home buyers, when you're looking at that home and you've got an idea that you can afford, you know, say a $550,000 home by moving your amortization from 25 to 30 years and lowering that monthly payment, make that same purchase, make that purchase of the $550,000 home and get a home that is now slightly more affordable to you, but don't use that as a way to say, hey, well now because of the lower payment, I actually qualify for 575. Because at the end of the day, if you make that 25 year mortgage into a 30 year mortgage, save yourself a couple hundred dollars a month every mortgage payment, and then take that money, invest it into your savings, invest into your retirement, use it for other purchases in your life, or better yet, make one extra mortgage payment every year, just one. So just one extra payment that's gonna reduce your mortgage by five years anyway, and you're gonna be paying it off in about 25 years. So you're getting the ability to maybe make that extra payment a few times, pay the mortgage down earlier, but qualify on that house a little bit easier because your income doesn't need to be as high. So again, I preface this with saying, as from an agent standpoint, let's be smart as buyers and let's still buy the home that you know that you can afford, and just take advantage of the lower monthly mortgage payment. So that was change number one. Now, with change number one comes another small add-on, and that is that any new construction home purchase, whether you're a first-time home buyer or not, now also qualifies for that 30-year amortization period. Now, I believe that's really aimed at trying to coax builders and developers to start building more homes, because, hey, if more people qualify, to buy these homes, these new homes, or it can entice somebody with a prior lived in home to upgrade to a brand new construction home because of the 30 year amortization. And even though the rates are a little bit higher, the payments will be the same and now you're in a brand new home. I think the goal of this one is really to try and drive more new construction homes, which in a market like Cochrane, where we have a lot of new construction listings and a lot of new homes being built already, that may actually saturate the market with new homes and cause those new homes to sit on the market a little bit longer because there's more of the new home inventory. 
and that actually could have the opposite effect. So it'd be really interesting to see how that's going to play out. Now, the second change is the one that I feel like can have the most negative impact down the road. So let's dive into that one here. Since 2012, the limit for insurable mortgages here in Canada has been $1 million. Now, what I mean by insurable mortgage is if you are unable to come up with 20% for a down payment, the federal government requires you to hold mortgage insurance to protect the big banks from that risk. Now, basically what that means is you can buy a home up to $999,999 and put the minimum required down payment of 5% on the first 500 plus 10% on the balance, and that will get you a home. Now, with that, you'll have to pay some insurance premiums, and those are typically about 3 to 4% of the mortgage value. And then that money or that premium amount is actually added to your mortgage loan amount. And then you pay interest on top of that. So in terms of your mortgage payments, that's what kind of creates all that like, hey, I went on and did this calculator, but my payments are different. Well, yeah, there's fees and those insurance premiums that are calculated after the fact. So that right now is the limit currently. Now, these changes, which as I mentioned, take place December 15th, 2024, is going to raise the limit for insurable mortgages to $1.5 million. Now that is a $500,000 increase, which is massive. Now there was some hint that this was potentially going to come as the Liberals did include this in their plans for election. However, they mentioned a increase to $1.25 million. So the increase to 1.5 is quite a bit larger and comes about three years after we expected this implementation anyway. Now, with that being said, increasing that amount, again, to have a $1.5 million home now be able to be purchased without a 20% down payment, they're saying it's to help affordability, but if you actually do the math on it, you're putting less down payment on that home. So your mortgage amount that you're borrowing is higher and you have CMHC fees of three or 4% on top of that. So your loan is even greater. And now when you take that greater loan and then amortize it over 25 years, the amount of interest you end up paying on a say $1.4 million purchase is again, a whopping substantial amount more. So not only are you paying more interest over that 25 years on that same home, but your monthly payment, because your loan amount is so much greater, makes the affordability comment kind of a bit of a bruise. Like the monthly payment needed when you put less money down on a $1.4 million house is substantially greater. And then on top of that, if you look at the income needed to actually qualify for that home, because the monthly payment is so much greater, that income is way higher. Now I'm gonna throw up a slide here on the screen and I'm gonna chat about this for a little minute here. Now this clip comes from a channel called Grow With Nav and he's a licensed mortgage broker uh, in the greater Toronto area. And he did this little video about these changes and I think he's got this pretty spot on. And when he's walking us through this, he's looking at two homes priced at $1.45 million. Now, in the old ways, we're going to assume that these are both new construction because he's used a 30-year amortization period here, which with an insured, unless you're a first-time home buyer buying that, the 30 years is kind of new construction. So let's call it new construction. We're going to say it's a $1.45 million home. He's got the two different down payments, obviously a difference of $170,000, but then you have forty-eight dollars or $49,000 in mortgage insurance. So your loan is almost $200,000 more. Your payment is almost $1,100 more a month. And over the course of that 30 years, you're gonna pay an extra $400,000 in interest. And you're actually gonna to need to make $45,000 more a year in combined household income to even afford those payments. So basically what that's saying is, hey, if you can't save up enough money for a down payment, no problem, you can just pay the bank more and get the same house. But at the end of the day, all it does is you pay the insurance company, you pay the bank more, and you require more income to actually afford that home. So call it, saying that this is gonna help the affordability and help Canadians buy these homes, this one I don't really 
agree with. I don't think that that's going to help at all. But I'd like to know what you think. Do you think that that's going to help the affordability crisis? Or do you think that this is going to have the effect that I think it's going to have, in which case the first one allowing first-time home buyers to take that 30-year amortization and enter the market a little bit quicker? It's that one I can side with. I think that one's going to help with affordability. It's going to help those first-time home buyers enter the market. But long term, I truthfully think that that's going to just flip us back into more buyers entering the market, strengthening the seller's market that we're already in, at least in Cochrane, and then continuing the price increases on homes, in which case this affordability will decrease in the next year or two. Um, truthfully, it's only really going to help out in the in the real short term. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. This one's a little bit different, definitely a lot of opinion. Uh, if you need some mortgage advice, I urge you to speak to a mortgage broker. Again, if you don't know one that you trust, please reach out. I can put you in touch with a few of my contacts that I've used on personal, my own personal mortgages, and with other clients in the past as well. Thanks, and I will catch you in the next one.